Okay, every two to three months on the internet, on Reddit, on Discord, somewhere out there, somebody asked a question about whether or not they should put wax on the bottom of their skimboard. Now we all know that wax goes on the top. You need the grip. What about the bottom? When you look at the replies, half the people say, yes, you should put some wax on the bottom and half the people say no. But nobody has any evidence to support either position. So my goal out here today is to try to do some experiments and see if we can solve this mystery and get some evidence to decide if we should put wax on the bottom of the skimboard. You don't need to watch the whole video for the results. Here they are. In the dry and wet sand, the wax made a difference. But in the damp sand and the water conditions, it didn't make any difference. Now, if you want to know how I got these results, watch the video. My name is ITSB Ragnall, AKA Ben Lin. And not only am I a skimmer, but I'm also an academic as well. I do have a doctorate level research degree. So I'm gonna try and apply some of the knowledge and methods that I've learned in academics to come out here and answer this question about the skim board and find out if we should put wax on the bottom of the board. Okay, so the big question that comes up when we're trying to test something like this, it's like, well, how are we gonna test it? Okay, so we have a lot of options. You know, I could have one of the pro skim boarders come out here and I could say, okay, here's a board, go use it without wax, tell me how it does. Then I could put wax on it and I could have them go back out. And then I could say, well, how did that do with the wax? And then the skim boarder could, you know, they could put uh, some measurements and go, oh, it worked, it didn't, whatever. One of the problems is that it's all subjective. That's the skim boarder's opinion. So maybe they felt it, maybe they didn't. So the other problem that runs into this when we introduce a person, when we try to uh, you know, do this test is they might not run the same speed every time. It has to be exactly the same if we really wanna compare wax versus no wax condition. So that's why we're not using a person to test this. So what I did to overcome this and to try to make a real side-by-side, apples-to-apples, oranges-to-oranges comparison is I built a machine that will launch this board. The launcher is powered by three springs attached to a launch platform that slides forward. The launch platform is held in place using an archery trigger. To operate the launcher, you simply pull back the launch platform and lock the trigger to it. When you're ready to launch, just pull the trigger. The launcher will send the board with the exact same amount of force every single time. So if we see a difference in how far the board travels, we know that it's attributable to just the wax. That's the only thing that would change between these conditions is gonna be the wax. Now, when we talk about validity, is this a valid test? Because the launcher is definitely not launching this board as fast as what a person sprinting would launch their board at. So we do have to acknowledge that that's one of the limitations of this particular test, is that we're really not going at the same speed. But here's my argument to that, is that if it's gonna work at a lower speed, it's most definitely gonna work at a higher speed. Now skim boarders will typically encounter four different types of conditions when they're out there skimming. The first one is dry sand. They might warm up on that or practice on that for beginners. Second one is damp sand. They may run into that sometimes. The other one is wet sand is where you'll typically see the drops and on water drops. Those are the two that get used the most is the wet sand and the water. And we're going to test them all. And starting off was the dry sand. So I set myself up on the dry sand, measured things out and got the launcher ready to go. And here's what I found.
let's take a look at the results. So what I did is I averaged the uh, wax and the no wax conditions. And you see the wax went 17.7 feet and the no wax only went 14.9 feet. So the results found that this was a significant difference when I ran it through a statistical program. And the bottom line is that the wax helped. So the next condition that I tested was the damp sand. So I got myself set up and ready to go in the damp sand. Here's the results of that. I ain't gonna lie, I am bummed out. Like I spent, what, 25 bucks, 30 bucks on that wax, and I just got done running the damp sand condition. It didn't seem like it made any difference whatsoever. Now, I'm saying this, this is like a gut you know, response. Haven't looked at the video footage yet. That'll decide you know, how well it really worked. But I'm like, dang, man, I had, I didn't just have the speed wax, I had an undercoating of turtle wax too. And I gave it, you know, plenty of time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to dry before I went and used it. So um, to my hand, it definitely felt smoother, you know, when I had put that on. But dude, I ain't gonna lie, like I was bummed. I was like, I thought it might make at least a little difference. It made nothing. Uh, yeah, you don't need a computer and statistics to tell you that that wax made no difference in the damp sand. And in fact, it was almost at the point where like it was statistically worse than having no wax at that point so the wax almost hindered it but there was definitely no difference between those conditions so the next one i had to test it in was the wet sand so this one what i did was i'd set myself up and i'd let that wave kind of wash that water in and i wouldn't launch the board until the water was going out and there was that thin layer of water on top of the sand which is where we get the wet sand condition that's when i would launch the board you can see there's that thin layer of water those were the conditions i used for the wet sand My personal thought after going through the wet sand condition is that it seemed like the wax might have made a little bit of a difference but that could just be me wanting the wax to um, you know make that difference where I got to go back and I got to look at the footage and we got to do that measurement on there and then decide if it really did make a difference or not because the reality is it may have just been me and then when I look at the footage there's no difference on that whatsoever but I do know that like when the water hit the board with the wax on it, it beads up. So I know that the wax was on there um, 
if it was going to make a difference, we have, you know, evidence now to determine that, whether it did or not. So my intuition was correct, and sure enough, when we averaged it, the wax condition went 22.7 feet. Without the wax, it only went 21.2 feet, and the statistics said that it was a significant difference. The bottom line is that the wax helped in the wet sand condition. The next condition to test is the water drop. So for this one, I used a swimming pool so that we wouldn't have to deal with waves. We wanted to have a consistent platform to work with every time. So I got it set up on the swimming pool and I launched from the side. Now this is a little different because on this one, I used a timer. So from the time the board left the launcher, I counted down seven seconds and that's where I made the mark because it seemed like after seven seconds, the board would just drift on its own through the water. And we really wanted to know if the wax was helping that momentum portion of the process. So after seven seconds, I stopped it and that's where we get the marks from. Here it is. And it was pretty obvious if you were watching this that when we averaged it, there was going to be no difference. They literally averaged out to the same exact amount of 22.8 feet. The wax made no difference whatsoever in a water drop. To summarize everything that I tested here, we can look at it like this. In the dry sand, the wax made a difference. It definitely helped the board go farther than when there was no wax but it didn't matter in the damp sand. Both those boards stuck to the sand. Now, when we got into the wet sand condition, the wax did make a difference and it helped the board slide farther. Now, this is important because this is where most skimmers are gonna drop. They wanna drop in the wet sand. So this could have an impact for those of you that skim and you're like, hey, is this gonna make a difference? Yes, it should make a difference according to the objective evidence that we found here. But remember in the water condition, it didn't make any difference at all. Thanks for watching. Hope this video helped and I'll see you out there skimming someday.